Music, Rebel Man, State of Mind. I'm Shows, your host, and I am in Tacoma. <laughs> Google it. Washington. I'll add, I'll add Washington to it so that it would be easier to. Where in the hell is Tacoma, Washington? And he is Spider in Ohio, where all the corn is. That's right. Not necessarily the band corn, unless they're on tour, which, you know, they were, and they were here recently. If I remember, <laughs> and um, the point of this, this this show, if you're brand new, is we're talking to nothing but independent musicians only across the country, across the globe. Actually, we have bands all over the world. Worldwide, we band- we're worldwide, not just local here in Tacoma, or Seattle, or Ohio. We go everywhere. We've been Australia twice. We've been in Germany twice. Have not been to London because, well, it's 4 o'clock in the morning there, and they don't want to get up 4 o'clock in the morning and talk to me, so whatever. They're lost, not mine. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, I give, I you give hear that, time. Londonites? Get with it. Yeah, I, I give K- a Dave from Kids Co. a hard time all the time on Facebook. It's great. And, um, so, and we talk about what's important towards the musicians. We, we just basically chat about the music, basically what it's about, talk about the music. And also was really needy greedy, well, not needy greedy, but really deep down in, in the hardcore of the musicians as they go on with their tour and on their life and their career. And tonight is a little bit different. We're talking to a teenager, a teenager musician. Um, we're keeping it very clean. I, yes, we're very, <laughs> we're being very clean tonight. Normally, we're not. <laughs> well, we had to after the about two episodes ago. We got. Every time we have anybody from Maximus here, we all get out of control. I know you guys are listening. <laughs> Maximus, oh my god. Maximus or, 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 or with T-Mot on it. Yeah, she's front. Yeah, we get we kind of get bunk bunctious. We'll just tap it. And so, yeah, keep anyway, it under control. Yes. <laughs> but I don't Come know, on. Clayton. You're talking about tea, uh, peanut butter and you want to faint. And then you said something about... Um, what you have done with the tour management. I don't know if it's kind of clean or not, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, depends. You know, I might be just scratching the surface. Maybe. Maybe you are. All right. and this <laughs> It's is the your... slow buildup to the big payoff. It's right. Slow. It's a slow boil. Yes. All right. So this time of the hour, we always take phone calls or we go in the chat room. So if you're following the show, this is how you follow the show. Your, your links are everywhere. You can click on that one. If you're listening to it, you see a little thing on called follow. Click on that and you come in the chat room. And chat room is open. We got Mrs. Spider, who is Spider's uh, girlfriend, is in the chat room. And she's by herself, 
with me and Spider. So go in there and ask questions inside the chat room. Or you can call us live. And I'll give you the phone number. It is Eric code 360 464-4216 and I'll put it in the chat room chat room and Mrs. Spider does have a question so I'll let Spider ask her do that one okay let's see here <laughs> question for Clayton from the chat room two parts to this first okay. part is who are your favorite musicians and or genres? And second part, what songs or artists inspire you the most? Okay. All right. All right. Who are your favorite musicians slash genres? Well, wow. I'm kind of all over the board with genres. Like, um, I, I mean, I listen to a lot of blues. I listen to a lot of country um, rock and roll, of course. I mean, that's right there. So genre-wise, I mean, probably those the, the big three. You've got rock and roll, country, and blues. Mm -hmm. uh, musicians, I mean, I've always been a huge B.B. King fan. Um, I've always been a giant ZZ Top fan. I always loved Billy Gibbons. I always thought he was a beautiful guitar player. And oh, um, um, Joe Bonamassa, he's not like a huge, huge, but I mean, he's pretty big. But... Um, Oh, yeah, Joe Bonamassa, great blues guitars. I mean, I've always been an Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash fan. You know, my, my grandpa was a huge Tom Tom Jones fan, so I loved him. Um, right now, let's see, right now I'd say I'm listening to a lot of, like, country music right now. I don't know what I'm into. I mean, right now, for some reason, I like country music. So um, it depends. It's 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 like seasonal, you know. People change. Mm -hmm. You yep. do. And like one of the first bands I ever listened to. I mean, I mean, Kiss. I, once I saw them live, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> they was they were just like, and they were, they were. I don't know how old they were. They were probably like, it was like four years ago. So they were like sixty five, but I was just like, holy cow. Well, certain there are a lot of like musicians that, that some of the older musicians that are really still going strong out there. They have that that cross generational appeal that, regardless of of what they're playing, the way they play mm -hmm. it, the show they put on, and everything involved with it is just it, it can't help but just grab your attention and just really just, just bring something out. Oh yeah, I mean I was just it was just like. The, the emotion I don't know I don't know I don't even know how to put it into words I'm lost I just thought it was just it was just so cool I'm gonna use the most blatant word it was just so cool <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I read their books I have one of their books uh, and then after I met them it was just like I, I mean I, I, to me I don't even remember what even happened because it was just like oh, just like wow mm. and then when I, the other part was go ahead when I've gone to see see Tool, I've seen Tool several times, and uh, and I always tell people that it's like it, it's it, it can't really be described. It's like it's like a religious experience almost. You go and you you know the songs that they played, but there's no way you can reproduce it in your mind because it was just that good, and it just pulled you into the moment yeah. so much that it's just it, it's all about being there with the the music, and everything else just kind of disappears. Yep. Like, um, I mean, I, I didn't even video any of it. I was so, which I'm not that person to stand there with my iPhone for two and a half hours videoing this concert. But like, I was just, it was just unreal seeing the people you've looked up to for a couple of years and for so long, you've listened to all their songs four times over and over and over again. Um, and then, and then it becomes reality, you know, like, like when I met it. It was like that. That that's that's him, and he's he's here next to me, and uh, it's like your brain doesn't connect. Like it's like that whole moment was just a flash. Hmm. And then the other part was, what songs or artists inspire you the most? Um, wow, I don't think there's a specific song. Like to me, there is songs, yes, that are gonna be. Those are going to be your favorite songs forever. 
like to me one of the greatest songs ever is written was um take it easy by the eagles to me it was just so poetic such a beautiful song to me that's that's an inspiring song um but i'd say artists i'd say um definitely kiss definitely um bb king um and recently i've been into this guy called chris stapleton he's new on the he's new on the scene but he is just i think he's cool so i just i just like to keep my my options open to what I listen to. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, she's saying in the chat room that <coughs> she says, cool, I know I get in the moods where I listen to a ton of certain type of music for a while and goes in faces too. So she agrees. Yeah. She gets that. Yeah. yeah oh, I'm, there I'm, it is. I guess refreshed. Yeah. Are you refreshed in the chat room? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what... Um, I go into phases too, where I listen to certain things, and lately I've been listening to nothing but your guys. Every independent music, musician I get, I listen to that more. I'll find you guys on Spotify, and I listen to my musicians, everything that has on Spotify. So it's kind of yay, and I put it on Facebook. Hey, you can listen to this musician here on Spotify too. So check it out. Awesome. So, yeah. Or what? Awesome. I find a great way to expand your music horizon. It's sometimes like there'll be a flea market or we got a record store. Just go there and buy like eight records. Buy yeah. eight, five, one, two. Just just don't be picky. Just whatever you kind of see, you think you'll enjoy, just grab it yeah. and listen to it. And then a week later, listen to it again. And, you know, you have like a good two weeks of music that you can listen to. And to me, that's a great way to broaden your horizon on listening to music. Like one of my one of my music teachers, his dad has 3,000 records. Oh, my gosh. 3,000 records. Could you imagine? Well, he's been collecting since he was a kid. Yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, I could not imagine. Like, <laughs> that's like... That's like eight and a half years of music. Yeah. Probably more than that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm not the best at math, but 3,000 is a lot. Oh yeah, that's a lot of music. A lot of uh, I'm I'm sure it's a lot of really with that much that much wax there. It's it's probably a lot of really classic, really hard to find stuff that mm -hmm. maybe is never going to be reproduced again. Like it might not even be on any other format but the records. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, there's probably so much depth in there of. Um, that will never be touched again, really. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it depends. Because, you know, I know you see on iTunes, like, oh, here's our old record that was remastered. I'll listen to that. I'll listen to the remastered iTunes version on my iPhone. And then and then you put it, you put it, you know, you put it on your record player. And to me, it's, it's a whole different record. It's a whole, oh, yeah. every song is different. Mm -hmm. You know, especially live albums. You know, to me, they're just, to me, there's a huge, huge, huge difference from iTunes and iPhones to a vinyl record. Two giant, like you listen to the old records, you know, they had to do it in one take. They had to play the song in one take. So, and then you, you think about through your mind as you're listening to the song, and nowadays, like we've been in the studio, it's like, oh, make a mistake, I'll play a note, and you'll put it in there, and it sounds like nothing even happened, which to me is awesome. To me, that you're able to piece together a song and not have to play the song 40 times. Because to me, you play a song so much that you just get tired of it. Mm -hmm. like eating the same food every day. You're going to say, oh, get this away from me. You know? Mm -hmm. We've already and gone you, over that whole situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, You can kind of hear that sometimes, too. Like, there's a there's almost a sterility to, to certain modern music. Like, even metal music specifically. Like, I, I'm a fan of Fear Factory, and... I saw them live once, and it was excellent, 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 excellent. But every time I hear them on an album of any kind, whether it's a record, digital, or whatever, it just sounds like th like there's something lacking. Like it's uh, obviously they yep. sat and they, you know recorded all their parts separately. They weren't all together. They and you know it, you can tell almost. And it, it's not like it sounds lazy or like it sounds like they weren't into it because it's. Uh, I mean. I'm sure they were all giving it 100%, but it's it's not the same feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was oh, talking, yeah. I was talking to... Me, to oh, okay, sorry, sorry. 
to me, you go like you listen to the the older records and. You